Are you having a hard time arranging the props and other elements in your product photo shoot? Hi, my name is Rose. I am a food and product photographer, Skillshare top teacher, creative entrepreneur, and frustrated singer. In this video, I will share my top 5 composition best practices to help you in your product photography journey. These are personal tips that I accumulated from years of photographing food and products for local businesses. So, without further ado, let's dive in. Before I share tip number 1, let me just quickly answer the question, why is composition in product photography important? because we want to create photos that appeal to our target audience. When we do product photography, we have a purpose. We have a message that we want to share through our photos. Composition can help us better achieve that. I love what Richard Garvey Williams said in his book, Mastering Composition, that effective use of composition can often help you create something special from even the ordinary. I hope you're more convinced and eager to learn my tips. So tip number one is to use visual weight. Visual weight refers to the visual impact of elements in your composition. The stronger an element's visual weight, the more it draws in the eye. Photos that are bottom heavy appear more natural to us because this is how we see the world. A lot of details and contrast at the bottom and clear blue sky at the top. When we look at photos, we also see gravity in effect. So photos that are heavy at the top part can look awkward and imbalanced. Basically, you can use your very own visual perception based on visual weight to analyze if your image is balanced and pleasing. That's what I did in photographing this organic beauty product set. It was challenging to photograph all the product at once and I could not follow any composition guide that works so I just used visual weight as guide to position the products and here's the final result. Next tip number two is using long-standing composition rules and guides as starting point. The first one is the rule of thirds. John Thomas Smith, a painter, engraver, and antiquarian, first wrote this long-standing rule in 1797. To follow this rule, you place your subject on the left third or right third of the frame, creating a pleasing composition. Each intersection point is a potential point of interest, so you just align your main subject along with other elements of the frame along these points to create a balanced or visually interesting image. For example, looking at these photos of the chocolate truffles, the one when I used the rule of thirds to position the subject and the blurry logo looks more pleasing and balanced than th this one where the subject is off-center. For me, the rule of thirds is the easiest and simplest rule to follow and utilize in my product photography. And to be honest, I used it a lot before I was able to explore other composition techniques, which leads me to my second favorite way to compose images, the diagonal composition. This is when the elements in the image are organized based on a diagonal line. Diagonal lines help to create depth, a sense of tension and dynamism in a photograph. Dynamism means the illusion of motion. Diagonal lines have more energy and impact than horizontal and vertical lines. For example, these brownies looked okay with this composition, but just changing the composition a bit and photographing it diagonally made it more appealing. We see the same effect on the Juanitos bread and chicken steak. But it does not end there. The direction of your diagonal line has an effect too. If the diagonal runs from top left to bottom right, it is closer to how the eye is accustomed to scanning the page. So it will be easier to follow and can suggest tranquility. But the downside is that it, is ha it has less of a dynamic impact. On the other hand, if the line runs from bottom left to top right, it is more challenging and dynamic and gives power, forcefulness, and movement to the picture. To show a few examples, here's another photo I took for Juanita's spread. I wanted a peaceful afternoon snack feel, so I followed the diagonal composition from top left to bottom right. 
On the contrary, and as the name of this product suggests, I wanted to add movement and dynamic to this composition, so I followed the bottom left to top right diagonal line on this image. I also applied the same composition guide to make this chicken crunch more fun. Same thing for these bento meals, the chocolate truffles, this cocoa berry lotion, and this necklace. So you can definitely use this guide in your very own product photography. If you want to suggest order and tranquility, you can use the diagonal top left and bottom right. And when you want to make it more fun and add power to your photos, you can maximize the diagonal bottom left to top right composition. The next guide is the triangle composition. There are many ways that you can utilize this. First is if you have three elements in your scene, you can place them at points of a triangle within the picture plane like this, and this, and this. Another way is to form an implied triangle, like this. Next, and related to the triangle composition, is the rule of odds, which states that an odd number of subjects in an image is more pleasing than an even number. I find this rule very useful to follow when deciding how many stacks of products to photograph, as well as in choosing the number of props and the number of products to photograph. This is why learning and practicing composition is such a game changer for me. Following and familiarizing myself with composition rules not only improved my photography, but it made my job so much easier. Whenever I have an overwhelming number of props in front of me, I start with odd numbers, then I try to follow the triangle composition. If it's not working, I try to follow the rule of thirds or the diagonal composition. If nothing is working, I just go back to following tip number one. And remember, I said use this guide as a starting point. Once you memorize it and get the hang of it, you can start breaking those rules. Tweaking those rules to add interest and drama to your shot is one way to do it. At the end of the day, you must be satisfied and happy with your work. That's the amazing part with photography. It's subjective. What is ordinary to other people may be extraordinary to you, and that's perfectly fine. Tip number three is using colors harmoniously and to your advantage. A tool that can greatly help with this is the color wheel. Pairs of colors lying opposite each other on the color wheel are considered complementary. These pairs are red and green, orange blue, and yellow purple. When put together, they have an unusual optical effect and appear to vibrate more intensely due to the quirks of the psychological process. Complementary colors are also a combination of cool and warm colors. I find this very useful when selecting props to complement the, the product I am photographing. For example, in this photo of the cocoa berry soap, I complemented the pink soap with the green leaves. For this photo, I complemented the cheesy purple yam bread with yellow flowers. I noticed that photos with complementary colors seem to have something extra. It could be because the contrast of cool and warm colors in a scene seems to create the balance. Next, analogous colors are colors next to each other on the color wheel, composed of one dominant color, usually a primary or secondary color, then a supporting color, a secondary or tertiary color, and a third color that is either a mix of the two or an accent color that pops. Their harmony comes from their similarity. When put together, these have a less bold effect than complementary colors, but can be appealing and easier to tolerate for longer. Next, tip number four is using the best crop and framing for effective images. When composing our scene and our shots, we want to create a pleasing and balanced image that can easily connect to our target audience or viewers. We want to create impactful photos, but easy on the eye. This includes eliminating distractions and framing our photos the best way we can. Our goal is for the elements to float freely within the frame. We want the frame to be less apparent, like we are seeing through it on a window without being aware of its existence. If we put elements near the frame, it can cause tension. Placing objects very close to the edge can lead to distraction. So avoid leading the viewer's eye to the corner because it will probably leave the frame. 
which is the opposite to our goal when creating great product photos. It is better to deliberately crop a portion of that element in the photograph rather than accidentally nicking the edge of it. You can also use foreground and elements in your scene to create a compositional frame like this. It is also worth noting where the photos will be uploaded or printed. I have experiences where I carefully framed and cropped my images, but it ended up being awkwardly cropped in print or by the online platform I uploaded it to. Keep this in mind when you are shooting and cropping. If your photos will go to Instagram, plan and prepare for a one-by-one -one crop. If you will use the photos on your Facebook and Instagram stories, plan and prepare for a 9 by 16 crop. And the list goes on. And finally, tip number five is practice. Yes, my best and final best practice is practice. When I photograph food and products, may it be a personal project or a client's product, I always learn something new. When I read books and watch classes and go back to my old images, I always see areas where I can improve. And that's how my photos started getting better. Don't expect to get things right the first few tries. Expect to photograph tons of food and products because you are setting yourself up for failure if you think that just a few camera clicks will get you there. If you are a small business owner, just practice taking photos of your product and watch your Instagram or your website photos improve over time. For example, this is my first attempt to photograph this organic cucumber soap. I wanted a blurry background, but this was too much. It looked overexposed too. I rested for a day and tried again. I was happy with my second try but thought I could still improve so I reached my third attempt to photograph this product and added uh, a few fun tricks and finally created the image that I envisioned. If I stopped the first time, I wouldn't be able to create the final images that made me smile and really proud of myself. So I encourage the same thing. That's it for my top 5 tips for composition. If you have any questions or if you tried any of these steps, please comment below. If you want to request a video or any photography related tutorial, just let me know through the comment section too. I personally read all of them. That's the thing, my channel is really small so let's take advantage of our little intimate community. You can help me too by liking and subscribing plus you will be the first to know when I upload more photography tutorials or videos. Oh, and if you want to dig deep into composition, lighting, product styling, and camera settings for product photography, I have in-depth classes about these topics on Skillshare. You can have access to all these classes plus over 35,000 classes thought by amazing creators around the world, starting with a one month free. I added a 30 days free link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope to see you in my next video. Have a lovely day. Bye!